where the camp is in a minute, but the track runs along here. But somewhere down here, there's a stump. A Huon Pine stump on the river. Yeah. It has two horseshoes sitting on it. The camp's just there, just up this... He's got up this little track here, and we'll follow me around there along the flat. It would have been a paling or a weatherboard off the off the camp. See, there's another one. See, that's another hue and pine paling there, see? Bit of hue and pine there. Would have been off the side of the camp. You can see where the nails rusted, see? So that would have been one of the palings on the camp. See, like that. Another one? Hold on. And they made it of out of hue and pine? Yeah, they split it. Split the palings with a with a paling knife. See there's a, a roofing nail. See, this might have been the back of the fire. That might have rolled over, but they would have nailed the iron to the fire. They had iron, yeah. like corrugated iron, so it wouldn't burn away. Yeah, see all these trees, like these blackwoods here, all this has grown up. All this would have been completely clear when this was built, when this was worked, because they cut everything down close to the camp for the fire. But this is how long the camp is. This is the extent of the camp to the east. This is the fireplace here. That's the fireplace. So I'll just turn this thing off. So what do you expect to find? Well, there'd be sand and gravel. See? So, so see they were just getting everything from the river? From the river, yeah. See? See the sand there? It's quite a good fireplace, really. And they were here the year round, those guys? Yeah, they worked here. They didn't work it for very long. Um, cause they, well, they had a lot of trouble at times getting a boat to come down in the right conditions to load the logs. There's a, a boat called the Gundai. Yeah. And she used to come down when the weather was alright and they'd, they'd take the horses down to the mouth of the river and um, hook onto the logs with the horse, horse team one, one at a time, mm -hmm. drag them out of the river, across the beach and into the ocean. And then um, someone in a punt like a rowing punt, yeah. they'd hook onto the log and then row it out, tow the log out to the gun die, which would be on anchor, a few hundred metres off the beach, okay. and then she'd pick the log up with a log grab, load it on the deck. See there? There's a rock. It's been brought up from the river, see? <laughs> It'd be all full of rocks in there. And you can imagine, see here, this is the height of the floor. And there would have been a sheet of iron down in there. Okay, yeah. Yep. The purpose of the fireplace was to cook and to... Uh, cook and keep warm, dry your clothes out, yep. So, obviously it's quite big, the fireplace, but the fire's just burning there, and you've got all the room around the side. You know, you can dry your clothes, because they're always wet here. They were also, like, baking bread in here? So oh, yeah, They cool, were yeah. bringing the whole flour lot. and all their all the the supplies whole lot, yep. for how long? Oh, they'd be here for months at a time, and they had a pack track from here to Birch's Inlet. And then at one stage, Roy Nielsen brought the Waiwari down, which is a little motorboat in Strawn, about 33 feet. Yeah. 32 feet, and um, they used to leave it um, tied up in Defries Harbour. Defries Harbour is on the other side, on the northern side of Point Hibbs. Okay. It's a little bay, a little sandy beach, and they uh, put a ring bolt in a rock tied the bow up and then a, a couple of lines ashore. Yeah, okay. So it's to leave it there. And they did use the Waiwari, um, not for long, but they used it to tow the, the logs back to Strawn. But um, historically they tow the logs like that. There's one next to each other. But when they towed them up the coast here, they, they had them end on. They're like a big string of sausages, so they're much easier to tow. So the last man who stayed here was 80 years ago. Yeah, I think it was 19, either 1930, 36 or 37, they left here, Roy Nelson. Uh, Claude Morrison was here. Well, Claude was the horse driver and um, he was also a very good bushman. 
um, and of course um, yeah, the others would be falling trees, getting the logs ready to to, um, to hook up to the horse. Yeah. And what they generally do, they they get a few logs ready, and then they bring the horses and pull the logs. They might spend a day just pulling all the logs that they'd cut with the horse, so they'd all help to hook the logs onto the horse uh -huh. or horses. Uh, well, they'd, they'd be washed yeah. down the river in a flood, okay. and down at the mouth they had a boom, a, a small log boom to stop the logs from going out in the ocean. But we'll go and have a look at, um, at the tracks that they cut anyway. So it's a sheet of tin, see there? Oh yeah. Off the roof. See there? That's iron under there. It was the ground spongy. You've got this bit of celery top pine here, see? It's a, been a post. See the nails in it? Yeah. Down there, nail. Another nail. There's another post here. It's not part of the camp, but it could have been some... It could have been something to do with the horses, horse stable. My father built a couple of camps when I was really young, okay. so I can remember exactly how he built them. And always it was the same setting? Always the same same style yeah, of camp. Yeah. They used uh, some places uh, like round poles, make a framework out of trees about that round, and then um, any accessible places where they could get their corrugated iron, they'd build the framework and then just nail the, the corrugated iron vertically, yeah. uh, sorry, horizontally, uh, for the walls and, uh, and the roof. They couldn't make a good living out of it? No. That's no. why, that's why, so much effort, well, so much uh, like... A lot of hard work, Yeah. and really it was just to feed their families, that's all. So why did you choose this work? Because it was during the depression and it was no... That's right, there's no work. It just did whatever, people did whatever they could to make money. And because there was a demand for you and pine for boat building and furniture, uh, there was an opportunity that they could cut the you and pine, get a timber lease, cut the, the trees, um, sell the logs or sell the sawn timber make money. This is hopeful. Here we go, here's, this. here's some steel. See? Now that's not, that's a piece of steel there. Now, what is it? There's a bit more steel there. A little bit more there. It's all broken away. Look at that. Because all the iron's that way, and the prevailing wind comes this way, all these trees would have been gone. And I'm thinking that when the camp collapsed, when I remember, I was thinking about that when I was sitting up there, I reckon it's all gone that way, and the iron's blown, the roof's blown in down there. Because when I thought about that wall, I thought, well, that's got to be the back of the fireplace. You now the wall on the other side? Yeah. And, um... This timber here is laying up, it's all laying that way. That post is laying down that way. And I think that the camp came along here. And there's the post there. And I think that's the camp. Across here, down there. Because the more I thought about it, well it's flat. Yeah. It's much flatter here. These trees, they've all grown up since. That blackwood there, that's probably only about 15, 20 years old probably. It just makes so much sense that this this is, is a nice flat area. Now, I haven't found much on the ground with a metal detector here, but over there there's a lot, and I think what's happened, the winds, when the camp's finally collapsed, it's gone that way. Because see, that post is laying that way too. Yeah. The camp would have been about, mostly they're about 10 or 12, 12 foot wide, the camp. And it makes so much sense, if I step that out from here, Six metres, see, so to there. Up That's to the twenty feet place. long. Yeah. Twenty foot long. Look, the tree's grown over it, you can't even move it. There's a bottle there, so you can imagine an old bushman sitting there, put his foot on there, <laughs> just looking up the river having a drink, and there's the bottle.
smell that? It smells different when it's fresh. Yeah. See that? Feel how light that is. <laughs> See, look at this house. This 80 year old axe mark there, look. One there. 80 year old axe marks. See, they fill that new and fine there to let a bit of sunlight in for the camp. That's why they've cut these down to oh. let the sun in. Alright. See? Then sand this comes up to there. That's the Joe Whitty there. He's got one whistle when the weather's fine, and he's got a long drawn out whistle when it's going to rain. Within 24 hours, he's never wrong. They walk the horses. See it's hollow? Oh yeah. And the tree, the trees have grown along on this bank here because the, the dirt would have been raised up. So the trees have grown quite well along the bank because it's been well drained. They've gone down there, around underneath that, you know those four yawn pine oh, stumps, yeah, they've gone yeah. round there rather than go over the, the top. And we can follow this track. The only thing that makes sense here is that there's um, there's horseshoes on the on a stump, which means that this must have been somewhere where they kept the horses from time to time. But they wouldn't have been able to leave them here in a flood because the river come up over the top of this. So it was only during summertime. Hmm. Here's the horseshoes, see? Oh. See, there's a lot of horseshoes here stacked up on this stump, see? Floods have covered all this up, David. See, it's sandy. Just going to try and prise that up there. See, now yeah, that's a smaller one. See how these ones are hanging off the stump? Yeah. It's just the moss and everything's grown the sand. It's just rolled them off, and I think that's how these have got down here. They just came off. All the horseshoes are on that stump. There's only three sheets, of t three sheets of tin here corrugated iron, galvanised iron, and I bet they had a forge here. They had a fire here. Yeah, and I think this, this piece, we cannot remove it as part of the... Yeah. It's a tool or something. Could be something at all, yeah. It's been driven into the stump. That's why they have so many horseshoes in here. Yeah. And the quality of it... Yes, is, that's right. You see all the layers? Yeah. So it's not made in a factory? No. No. So I... I think that's what it is. Yeah, interesting, isn't it?